questionnaire we have prepared for you. You don't need to fill out the front side. It's just some general questions about Speckle's health. Um, you don't have to go into into detail or anything like that. Okay. I'll just over to you. And then for here, uh, you don't need to fill any of this out. Just uh, make sure the highlighted areas are correct and we just need your signature at the bottom. Okay, very good. So okay. first page and then just check the highlighted yeah. area. Okay, That's all great. you need to do. And the pen's right there. Oh, perfect. I will go ahead and let Dr. Yak know that you guys are here and update Speckle's weight in the system. Great, yeah. thank you so much. A lot of your concerns are very um, common, mm -hmm. um, and I do see a lot of senior pets where we do start seeing things, even if they're totally asymptomatic, that's why getting them in more regularly for exams, okay. checking baseline labs. And I, um, typically, I would call her a senior. Um, usually, in a dog her breed, I would say about seven is considered senior. Mm -hmm. um, so my 13-year-old is way beyond senior. Right, right. Um, and typically, what we do is say, yes, even though we say semi-annual exams are recommended, it's not required. Okay. Legally, we have to see speckles at least once a year just to make sure everything's okay. okay. Um, but lab work, at least once a year, if everything looks great, she's not on chronic medications or things like that, mm -hmm. a panel once a year is probably going to be sufficient and we okay. can sync that with an annual heartworm test. Um, that being said, if you find abnormalities or she's symptomatic, like drinking more, peeing more, panting more, decreased appetite, unwanted weight loss, we might pick and choose depending how her labs look, we might do more diagnostics going okay. from there. Um, a lot of times as dogs get older, if they start having changes in breathing, more panting, coughing, if it's not associated with her previous knee surgeries or things like that, mm -hmm. sometimes you look, they can have older airways like people, chronic bronchitis, okay. allergies, um, some uh, endocrine diseases, hormone diseases like mm -hmm. their adrenal glands sometimes can cause them to pant more, um, breathe different, drink more, pee more. So it really depends as far okay. as labs. I always like to say to clients, start thinking at seven years old, I even tell them when they have puppies, labs when they're around seven or eight, okay. just to check the older dog and cat things. Okay. Changing diets, if their labs look good, like we don't see early kidney issues, mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily change foods. Um, it doesn't mean you always have to do prescription foods, right. but it means like if you have like kidney issues, right, and we'll talk about lab work, then you basically would want a lower protein type of food. Okay. So your question is, is a good question, but it really depends on what we're dealing with, how her weight looks, all that stuff. Um, the good news is that she's not having trouble eating because one of your first questions about dental disease and things like mm -hmm. that, our goal is making sure there's not a tooth that's infected, mobile, okay. painful. Usually the common signs you're gonna see if a dog is having mouth pain or something is a little sore, it's eating slower, mm -hmm. not seeing that. Okay. Um, taking longer to eat or making a mess of the food okay. or not eating like the chew toys or the crunchies or the bully sticks or rawhides if you offer them as a reward. A lot of clients, I will tell you though, even if their dogs have nasty teeth or abscess or mobile teeth, will still eat their treats because right. that's what they want to do, right. which is totally fine. So, so a lot of this is stuff that they've kind of acclimated to. They're not going to cry out necessarily when they're sore, but they're going to show it. They're going to be a little slower. Mm. They're going to think about, do I want to follow mom around the house? So I'm, uh, they're going to come back, I'm just going to wait here. That's the kind of stuff you want to be watching for. Right. Because how I see her here when she's a little bit nervous at the vet is not always going to be very easy for me to tell that she's stores that you're going to have to tell me from at home. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Speckle. Hi. Hi, baby. Hey, don't, Mama. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from here, go all the way to the back. I'll probably find the lumps as we go along. Um, pretty friendly? Yeah. Thanks, Beth. I know. You're good. I know, Stay. honey. Stay honey. Um, and then overall, besides the surgery, she's a pretty healthy girl. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, vision. Um, any visual? Oh, you're okay, sweetheart. Any visual deficits or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and then in the back, I know, sweetheart, you're fine. In the back, she's got pretty heavy buildup on these back teeth here. Okay. But I wouldn't say that she's overtly painful. I don't see any obvious um, abscesses. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of tartar, okay. but not horrible. For her age, especially if she had a dental like two plus years ago, mm -hmm. not too bad. Okay. okay, so don't feel too bad about that. Um, eyes actually pretty clear, you, so no visual deficits or anything like that. A lot of the times they start developing what's called nuclear sclerosis, where they start getting this blue-gray kind of haze to their mm -hmm. eye. Clients might say, gosh, you know, when it starts getting dark at night, my dog's walking a little slower or trips or gets more apprehensive around like a stranger because mm -hmm. her vision or the peripherals might start kind of losing okay. just like a person. Um, but I don't see cataracts in her, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll listen to her ticker. Um, no coughing, labored breathing, panting more than normal. Um, I don't know, sometimes she does pant, but then if you look at her speckles, <laughs> it just stops right away. So, 
Okay. Hi, Papa. Hi, honey. All right, let's take a listen. You're okay, sweetness. Good. No heart murmurs. My dog has a murmur. My dog sees oh, a really? cardiologist, so I have a greater appreciation oh for heart doctors for dogs if they need to. Um, but again, you're not noticing coughing, changes in breathing, labor mm -hmm. breathing. That's a good thing. Okay. The other vet, I should say, back in October did notice about 25% decreased range of motion on mm. both. Okay? okay? Not uncommon. And some of it's anticipatory. They're like, oh gosh, I'm at the vet. Leave me alone. You're cranking on my alleys. See how she's pulling back? She did, she's kind of fighting me there. Mm -hmm. Not uncommon. Mm -hmm. she's, I'm trying to support her, too. So this one, too. Very reluctant to have me full range of motion. Okay? So she might have a little bit of arthritis up in here too in those hips. Not uncommon in her age. Okay. Don't worry too much. It's just very common that we can see. Show me those lumps. Okay, so one, I think you would feel it. I think there's, I said it was on the There's one right here. Okay. This one, if I was a gambling person, but I still would say poke it just to give us that peace of mind, it's probably what we call a lipoma or a fatty tumor. Okay. Soft, squishy, pop it back and forth. Doesn't cause pain. She doesn't like me playing with it, but she's letting me. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like a soft, like kind of a grape in there. Okay. Usually, very common in lab retrievers. If we poked it today and it looks like, on a slide when I spit it out, if it just looks like grease or fat, mm -hmm. I wouldn't send that in for $160. Okay. <laughs> the idea is, is if it looks like fat, smells like fat, and it's not bothering her, it's probably fat. Okay. They're very slow growing, very common in older seven plus year old dogs. I've even seen it in younger dogs. Doesn't mean that we have to make her a pin cushion and take them all off because okay. guess what? She might develop five more in the next year. Right. A lot of dogs. So lumps, lumps are very common as they get older. Lumps are, I would say, depending on the breed, can be common. Okay. But anytime you have a new one that feels different or comes on fast, the first thing we'll say is aspirate it, poke it with the needle, make sure it's nothing obviously bad because obviously you want to take it off sooner than later if it's small enough. Mm -hmm. If a client comes in and the lump is bigger than my head, I'm gonna be like, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole, go see a boarded surgeon, right. right? Because a lot of the times, the longer clients wait, the more they're likely to spread further beneath the surface, okay. and I wouldn't be able to get all of it. Okay. Instead, you, instead of doing a master movie, you de -bulk it, meaning you make it smaller, but you can't get all of it. Right, it's still there. So in talking about a wellness plan, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily an insurance. It's not, not insurance. necessarily a discount plan. It's almost like you're, taking care of the basics for your dog yes and in monthly increments versus uh, paying one, in a couple piece. large credit card installments um, the other thing is I will say thankfully because of this and it's not for everybody but I have seen clients that normally would sit and wait a lot longer at home watching things either decline or progress or masses get bigger clients are more willing to come in with their pets more often because they have this unlimited exam okay with any doctor here only this hospital though not okay. other BCAs or some people say, give me an estimate, but I want to pay out of pocket as I go. Good. I don't care. I just want to do what is right for her and what makes sense for your budget. Okay. Okay? That's right. the bottom line. And clients, like, love that I can kind of, like, come to me and say, do you think it's a good deal this year or not? Right. You know, if you need all the vaccines. Because she doesn't need to get her teeth cleaned every year. Exactly. And I don't want to do that. As she gets older, I don't want to do it every year because there is that less than 1% anesthetic complication rate, but that's... 1% too much, you know, so right. it's not worth it. Now, if a dog's teeth look horrible every year like this, different story. Potentially, they should have a dental every year. Oh, that's just nasty. Yeah, it's just nasty. Mm -hmm. She's not anywhere near there. All right. But, you know, don't have to decide and make that call today. Our, basically, idea was just to say, hey, as she gets older, we want to watch her weight, try to get her to not be on a lot of arthritis medications if at all possible, which means watching her weight, mm -hmm. um, working on supplements and things like that for her knees because we can see that she's a little sore and stiff, decreased range of motion, not uncommon for her age and her history, um, and start thinking about senior checkups like blood work, okay. x rays, things like that as appropriate. Are there other things that pet owners should be looking out for as their yeah. pets get older? Yeah, good question. A lot of that stuff that we have checked, we can see them decline. So what you're looking for is any source of pain or discomfort. I'm eating slower than I normally did. I'm losing weight despite a good appetite. I can't go on long walks like I used to do. I'm not following around the house like I used to. Those are all the things that show, even though she's not crying out or acting lethargic, things that are different from speckles from say six months or a year ago. Anything that's different for her can mean, on a subtle note, there is something else going on, and that's what we want to check. That's why we talk about blood work, x-rays, when indicated. And okay. usually at this age, this is a perfect age to start. Get that baseline. Make sure mm -hmm. everything looks good before it's too late where we can't do certain things and intervene.